within the company is to kind of help you and your end customers get the most out of the platform once you get it in there from the operations, the process flow, the best way to do things, best practices. I kind of work with you guys on that to make sure your, your customers are getting the most. I think okay. um, I'm just sorry we don't have more of us in our group because we have about 15 or 20 consultants that we network with. But uh, I will make sure that this recording is shared with them and uh, we'll connect you directly with everybody so that we can uh, expand on the network. All uh, right, who's going to kick off with the background to smart solutions? Is it Henry or yes. James? James, you can go. Yeah. I'll go for that one. Okay, okay um, thank you, Henrietta, uh, Debbie, I'm now Laurier. Thanks very much for joining and Rod, uh, thanks for setting the session, putting the session together. Um, if, if I'd say a bit of my background, I've been in contact centers now going on 25, 26 years. I started out communications with the post office and telecom. And then I joined a little company, I think everybody knows, which is called Ninzi Connect nowadays. So I was with Multi Connect yeah. then. So, yeah. so I brought in, so I did all the Davox implementations, Intervoice, IVR, TCS, Workforce Management, brought NICE into South Africa. So my background comes is from a technical perspective and um, I'm still very techy. I'm not, um, I might say MD, but I still like, I spend a lot of my time <laughs> working with the developers and the, and the backend sides, breaking the systems, uh, looking at the technologies going and, and driving the new development. Where it started, I'm seeing when I left MultiConnect, um, I got involved in a started my passion for call centers was already set in that stage. Then I started looking at the smaller markets where the big thing is that in South Africa, companies that want to get to the call center market couldn't get into it. And this is you're talking about, this is uh, 20, 21 years ago. So it's, it's companies trying to get the call center market was very cost, it was very costly and there was no small solutions in there. So I started with a company, then I was with Autrix and we built a small call center solution for the entry level market, which worked quite well. And then I joined up and then I got involved with the outsource call center. Then I joined a group, a, a company called VVM and, and I joined up with that and I was with them for 12 years. In there, we started developing our own call center and that's where smarts and the smarts products were started. So we started building our call, own call center products with, as you know, the cost of international call center products are inhibitive and growing in the collection space, it was it's difficult to make any margins if you're paying for offshore products. So we started building in 2012, I'm saying the, the smarts company, Zuka was at that stage was set up in 2006 and we started working in the telecom space. And then in 2012, I did a presentation to my board on the group and um, asked if I could take the products out and develop them for market. So we've spent the last four years, um, I'm saying 2016, we started doing it. So in 2016, we started developing specifically for market. And we only last year, mid, beginning to mid last year, we started promoting to market. So we spent a lot of time and a lot of resources and funds developing the product. Smarts has got development teams in South Africa and Mauritius. Uh, the company is still small. We only, at the moment, we had 59 staff, of which 30 of them are all senior developers. So we focus a lot on the developing. Henry joined, he'll give you a story, he joined a while back to sit and help and drive the partner, uh, the partner partnership. And, that, and then in the beginning or end of last year, we had some introductions with a gentleman in the US who looked at the smarts product. Um, I don't know if anybody knows Mark Zabrowski. He used to be the VP for Aspect in the US for quite a long time. And him and Henry had worked together. So um, I met up in, um, in Dallas and we had some discussions. And the 1st of March, we launched smart solutions in the US. In that, in that time now, we have, um, we've signed up 11 new partners in in the US and a partner in South America. And we at the moment now in, in the final stages of closing our first deals. So that's been very exciting on that side. In South Africa, there's, I'm saying Henry can give what's been happening in the South African market, but we're very excited that, that the South African brand is making inroads into the market. We're actually creating quite a lot of disruption because the people are tired of working with, with the big brands. They're saying the big brands, they're arrogant, they, they're competing directly against them in their own marketplaces. So it's, 
we've decided our only model is we'll only work with partners and that we're not working directly. So we will be no selling directly into markets. We're not competing with the people that we're talking to, like yourselves. We don't want to compete because lots of times you'll be going in there talking to that and then someone else will be coming with the same product on a different side. So we're trying to uh, not get into that type of, we're not going to be getting into that type of space. Look, on the consultancy sides, um, I take my hat of two people. I think it's very hard and it's, you, you work long hours and you work hard for your money. I did it for the first couple of years when I left my Lindsay. So, and, and the thing is, it's also, it's, I'm saying price of product, features of products, trying to keep your clients happy. You're always trying to find the best product to do that. So we're hoping that today we'll be able to show you something that's a bit more exciting, that's um, a bit different from what you see in the normal marketplace. And yeah, but also we thank you for the opportunity, making the time. Let's me finish. Sorry. Sorry. And, uh, can I pass it to uh, to you, Henry, just for your bit of uh, background, and then uh, no doubt we'll get into uh, the product. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, uh, been around a while. Um, been in the telecommunication space since I actually left um, university. Um, so joined Al Alcatel. It was in BCX, um, you know, and then uh, that was part of the Altec Group. Um, you know, just kind of spent a lot of time there and then um, branched out and then, um, you know, had an opportunity to start up um, the Aspect office in in South Africa and for the rest of Africa in 2000. So again, built out a whole partner matrix there, did a lot of um, work into Africa, particularly for the MNOs like MTN, um, uh, Airtel and the rest into Africa. So as they were opening up mobile operations we were providing um, customer engagement platforms and supporting them in terms of their customer services so uh, i understand the african market been out there for quite a while so again <clears throat> um you know in 2017 obviously aspect had a, had a had a change in terms of you know the product sets and they wanted to get into the cloud but they tied themselves so heavily invested into aws and um, aws didn't have a node in africa didn't have a node in the calac region didn't have a node in the um, asia pac region so it was a bit of a downfall so obviously the revenue declined in terms of you know trying to push to the cloud because other vendors had an opportunity to you know, although they were in the cloud, there, were, there was an opportunity for them to take the aspect on premise base. So they had to shift that out and uh, unbundle themselves with AWS and look for another platform. So run about there, they closed the office in South Africa. Um, uh, so I, well, you know, I was looking around and, um, you know, James and I had a discussion, uh, did an assessment on the product. It was just something I've not seen, something that's kind of not available internationally, in my opinion. I've seen what they've done very well which I can put my hat on now is what we've done very well is, um, you know, had a look at all the, um, the, the loopholes in terms of all the competitors. And I think what James and his team have done really well is, is to plug those gaps. And you'll probably see that when Lee does the presentation. Um, and I think James forgot to mention the fact that, uh, you know, when, when, when we appointed the mark in, in the U.S., obviously he had to do a due diligence for himself, um, being a prolific guy in that region. Um, he had been working with a lot of salespeople, a lot of professional services people. So he took the application um, ran it by some of the, the, the people that have been in the marketplace for many years, like himself, um, just to get some sort of feedback from them in terms of the due diligence. And it was very positive. And hence, that's why we employ him. That's why we have 12 resellers. And all of these resellers have probably had Genesis, 8 by 8 5 nines aspect for probably 20 years. And they now shifting and um, looking at our stack and saying, you know, here's a market for this for this product, and um, it's a disrupting product. So yeah, glad to be on board. I've been with James for two years now, and um, we're making really good headway. Thanks, Rod. Okay, excellent. Um, so Debbie, Hilaria, Henriette, um, any questions just before we ask Lee to kick into the presentation? Anything specific? Not from our side at the moment, thanks. Okay. Not from me either. Nothing here. I'm fine still. Okay, good stuff. I think, um, Lee, then, if you would like to kick into the preso, uh, floor is yours. I'll, I'm going to kill my video, so it's all yours. Oh, thank you very much. Um, obviously, you would have heard of my introduction. I'm not South African. I am British. 
So I'll try to avoid kind of dropping in any London slang, but if I do, please feel free to shout loudly and I'll make sure I don't. <laughs> well, what I thought we'd do is, I'm not a big fan of PowerPoints. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think death by PowerPoint is probably one of the worst things around. So I've got one slide, which I would just want to talk you through, which is the kind of whole stack itself. And then what I'll do is we'll jump in actually and look at the system itself, yeah? A live demo. We'll look at some agent stuff, some of the things we talk about here, some of the differentiators. Then we'll touch on some of the back end stuff, which is, again, slightly different on the reporting. The things that we've looked at and we've gone, there's better ways of doing this. So we're, that's the kind of structure that we're going to work through. Now, this is the whole stack, okay? A couple of points I will mention here. This is obviously all cloud-based. And um, I'll talk a bit about the technology, Docker's containers, etc. But everything is within the cloud. There is no third-party deployment at all. There's no soft phones to be deployed, no recorders, nothing. It's all included. So the first thing we did, as obviously James and Henry mentioned, we come from we all come from different aspects, but we've all been we've got 25 plus years in the, in the industry. We looked at the the existing platforms out there, like the obviously the aspects, the advisors, the Genesis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we went, okay, let's, let's kind of flip this on its head. Because all of those kind of legacy stuff, they look at um, like an individual transaction. It's an email that's coming in. It's an outbound call. It's a WhatsApp. It's an SMS. It's an individual transaction. And they kind of report on those and then measure those kind of SLAs. Now, we do that as well. But everyone then kind of about 18 months, two years ago, started to try to tie everything together in the back end to get that customer journey, that, you know, that customer experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, we thought, okay, well, let's, let's turn it around. And when we started on this platform, we put the customer in the heart of the system. Everything, all the reporting works around the customer. And this is what I'm going to show you in real time. So they can come into the platform, obviously, any particular channel. I'll talk a bit about the channels. Uh, inbound, outbound, we do full surveys, etc. But the customer comes into communications, which is the heart of the system. From here, we've got three main kind of sections we're going to talk about. We've got our inbound stuff. We've got our outbound stuff. And we've got our human asset management, which is the kind of like a very big differentiator. But as a customer comes in, obviously, we've still got the kind of old school IVR self-service. Yeah? You, you, everyone needs it, even though we're in lockdown, no one still actually wants to talk to anyone. So you, you've got the kind of press one for a statement, press two for my pup code, press three for my balance. You know, go off and data dive into the warehouses, the CRMs, get that information and push it back to the customer by whichever channel they've come in on. You know, standard stuff which you would expect as well, but we've done some extra bits on that. We've also got a whole omni-channel side of things. Now on the self-service, I'm gonna split this up as I go in. We've got our bot technology. A Couple of points on this, by the way. These are not Google, they're not IBM Watsons. These are our own bots. And it's a particular decision we made to go this route. First off, if you're in, obviously, the African market anywhere, running a bot transaction on a Google soon adds up to a hell of a lot of money. So that was one thing we wanted to look at for our own customers. But the other is, they can, they can be a bit generic. If you're running a Google or a Watson, your customers, eventually, they're going to get American spellings. They're going to drift. They're going to get American slang coming out because it's, it's, it's the biggest market, and that's what the AI is learning. So we're like, okay, mm. let's kind of switch this around a bit. And we built a three-tier bot. Now, we've got the agent, which is the kind of front-facing side. It's the fluffy part. So it's got your customer's logo, the branding, the color scheme, that these are the five things I can do. If you don't want one of these, go to an agent. You know, that kind of front-facing stuff. But behind that, we have the analyst. Now, the analyst is the bit that goes off and does the data dives. Pulls up the information, pulls up the interest payments. This is where the bot goes off and says, okay, give me your ID number, and then goes into other options. So, obviously, that's all there as but well. Also, they've got their now, plans. the thing I will say, I'm just going to you guys out of the way there. Um, because we, we use Docker and container technology, okay? So, every, every customer has its own container, which has all of this platform in it. Now, what that means is every customer has his own bot. And the AI starts learning not just the business, but that particular customer. So, a couple of examples. We've got... Obviously, we've got collections bots. They're learning different things. They're learning within the client's um, interest payments, deferrals, lots of swear words, mainly just because of the industry they're in. And they're kind of learning that, but it's learning that particular 
debt collection company and their clients. We've got other ones which are doing like um, in a different container, doing telemarketing, completely different demographic. That's picking up things like obviously Converse, Vans, different type of slang, a younger slang. And it's learning that kind of stuff. Um, it was mentioned about our South American partners. Their bot is actually currently going to be learning Portuguese, obviously because it's the main language. So everyone is kind of individual and it picks up on that particular client. But over all of these, we have the brain. Now the brain, the brain doesn't take any IP out from the customer at all, but it pushes information back in to keep obviously every, all the others up to date. So things like if, if we've got bots that are learning Koza or Zulu, yeah, eventually all the bots will know Zulu slang, like they will eventually probably know Portuguese. So the brain is a kind of bit that updates everything else. So we've got our bot technology here. Now, from here, obviously, you might have a full self-service and it's dealt with here. But if they want to, they can break out to an agent or they can come directly into an agent. If they come through the agent front end, we've got what we call automatic interaction distribution. This is easier to be seen than explained, but I'll, I'll explain it now and then I'll show it to you. It <laughs> kind of works on these, the sentiments and the ratings and the previous history of that customer. And it's using that kind of information to look for the best available agent. So if you think about your inbound skill routing, your cues, and then go one layer above that and go to like empathy. And it's looking for the best agent with the best sentiments, the best ratings for this customer. Uh, and I'll show you that actually in real time. But then come in here, obviously then go into our unified agent screen. A lot of people say, yes, we're, we've got a uni we're omni-channel. i be honest, I hate that word omni-channel. It's been around for... 17 years or so now. There's very few true omnichannel platforms out there, let's be honest. They're coming to our unified screen. Again, we've, we've added some different bits onto our unified screen, which I'll show you. We've got the normal things you would expect, inbound dialers, outbound dialers, predictive powers, whatever. And I'll talk about these when I look at the outbound. But we've got the two-way SMS. Uh, we are an official WhatsApp business partner, by the way. So we've actually integrated that into the system. Again, there are a number of people out there who say, yeah, we've got official WhatsApp for business, but a lot of them are standalone. They're not integrated into a unified agent screen. So we brought that in here as well. Telegram is another IM platform. It's more of a, WhatsApp very much is, a, is a like a, it's a consumer platform. Yeah, it's used a lot for personal use and then we've all jumped on the bandwagon to use it for business. Telegram is from the start more of a B2B platform. The groups are bigger, you could do more with it. It's, a, it's, a, it's more popular in the West, yeah? But we've got that in here as well. Um, iTemplates, again, I'll show you a bit about the iTemplates. These are, these are interactive iTemplates. If you think about, um, you're sending out a marketing campaign, you could normally obviously might whack out an email or an SMS to pick up the kind of low hanging fruit, the cost effective ones. But here, an ops guy or a marketing department can build a very quick linked images and information and get that out within an SMS campaign. So they can get a lot more info out. We're fully email integrated. Uh, currently with Office 365, Exchange, um, Gmail. We also, we also just had to retrograde for another client and somewhere else in Africa back to EWS, Exchange Web Servers. So we do it because this is all our own IP. If we have specific requirements, we're not going away and saying, okay, Yes, let's go away and put that. Oh, you're going to have that in Q4. Because if you're waiting that kind of time for it, you've lost the opportunity. So we're quite quick on our dev time. I do want to touch on these two, the social media stuff. The Facebook, the Twitter, etc. This is not scraping your social media feeds with your client's social media feeds. It's not looking for hashtags, mentions, viral spikes, etc. That's marketing. That's a completely different thing, completely different environment and different tools. This is the social media messaging off of that platform. So if someone is on your client's Facebook page and they want to message a client, it can come into the agent and the agent then obviously has all the other information available as well within the screen. Uh, box we discussed. Naturally, we've got web chat. Now, within our unified agent screen, across all of these channels, by the way, we have real-time and historical reporting on sentiment analysis. So the agent can see, well, the agent sees a simplified version, obviously. They see a smiley face, happy face, neutral face, whatever. But behind the scenes, because of this AI stuff, it's actually doing a very, it's reading the conversation. It's not just keywords. As the stuff starts to learn, 
you know, pick up the conversations started well and gone really badly. So it kind of learns that, but that could be reported on, and I'll show you that side as well. The other thing we've got on the other end of here, by the way, apart from those sentiments in real time, you have got full ratings. So every channel you can put a rating on for every transaction, one in 10, one in a hundred, whatever your client wants really. And uh, they can rate you one to five, one to 10. It's all configurable within the system because it's GUI based, it's not coding. Interesting enough, what we found with, with one of our clients, um, they actually, they, they had really good agents, okay? Their sentiments of their agents were perfect. They were polite, they were coming across well, even their punctuation was great. But the ratings from the customers were poor. It was only when they started tying the two together, we identified the fact that the agents are great, but they just didn't have the tools to answer the customer's query. So the customer had no choice but to give them a poor rating. But they, weren't, they didn't hammer the agents for being bad because they could see the agent was good. So they're kind of like, Productivity analysis be done across obviously both ends of the system as well. That's on our inbound side, which we'll look at and I'll show you. We have got a full outbound capability, naturally. Uh, these are all in a, what we're launching is a drag and drop builder. Now what's gonna happen is when you cut your, you're probably gonna start with an SMS campaign to be honest your clients, it's, it's the cheapest way to do it. Um, you, they might have a whole database department doing a whole telephone number matrix and analysis saying, okay, look, yeah, this is a good number. This is the best time to send. This is the best time to call. Right. But when they load it into the system, well, yeah, I, I heard the echo back there. <laughs> um, when they load into the system and they cut the campaign, smarts will also say to them, okay, here's my 100,000 SMSs. Did you know 15,000 of these have never been delivered? Do you really want to bother sending this? And obviously, it's going to prompt the ops guys as well to start thinking about this, because sometimes ops can have a habit of like, oh, let's load everything in, let's send everything, let's call everyone. So it's going to kind of put some, some management tools back to ops as well. But from that, you can say, okay, from uh, any, any SMS that uh, I haven't got a response from, because yeah, it's a two-way SMS platform as well. Let's cut it into a dialer campaign. And it could flow off automatically into a dialer campaign. We've done something slightly different here, again. We've got a predictive dialer. We all know what a predictive dialer is. You've got your number of agents, you've got your talk time, your average handling time, your connect rates, how many calls do I need to launch in order obviously to keep my agents busy. That's your algorithm. And different companies have different algorithms. That's basically what you're paying for with a predictive dialer. We've, we've gone one step further. On top of this, what we're bringing in is what we call an intelligent dialer. So using all this kind of historical information we know about this customer, when you cut this campaign and you load it up as a predictive dialer campaign, let's say, I don't know, 100,000 records on a Monday morning, yeah? So go for the week. The first three records on there to be dialed, the system will know for a fact, this guy's never asked the phone on a Monday. They don't ask until Thursday afternoons. So even though they're the first three records, the system will not dial it until Thursday afternoon. So you're not going to be clogging up your predictive dialers with your no answers, your busy tones, your retries, etc which then obviously makes the algorithm work harder, and then you obviously have to increase the pacing, et cetera, et cetera. So we're kind of, we've built in that best time to call that AI, that historical contact of when to actually dial it. Even though it's already in the system, the system will decide it. So, now that kind of technology, drag and drops across all our, all our solutions. Obviously there's different rules about telemarketing or things like WhatsApps and stuff, but that's a separate thing. But all of these drag and drop bills on our outbound campaigns. From a dialer perspective, we, obviously this is your inbound analysis, we've got some extra stuff. But as I mentioned, I'm ops, okay? Uh, my background, I started as an agent. I was a training manager for one year at Speakers Outsourcers. I spent 10 years running Indian call centers back to the UK. Did a year or so in the Middle East running UK centers. I'm purely ops. And the bit that's always been missing from dialers is the human asset management side, yeah? They always kind of looked at as two separate things. But what we've done is because we're in containers, we have a single sign-on. The agent logs in through the human asset management system. So they're automatically getting clocked in, they get shift patterns, times, etc. It's got the, the core HR, you know, joined here, got promoted there, was top seller was here. Top seller. It's got that in there as well. But it's also got things like a full QA platform. Build your QA scorecards drag and drop, you can have multiple choice questions, text answers, whatever the case may be, instant fouls. 
It could be three tier assessments, the agent, the QA and the manager. All that is in here as well. It's got a full e-learning platform. And once you start tying these together, obviously you're starting to say, okay, the QA, this guy keeps failing on this point. And so let's start pushing some knowledge nuggets or whatever terminology you want to use to this agent on this subject. And because they're coming in through this signing here, before they actually get on to their shift patterns, they're going to see the QA scores, their ratings assessments, their, their, you know, their sentiments, and they will see they have to do a course before they start their shift. Very good for remote working at the moment, because obviously you haven't got side-by-side -side coaching and you're trying to push these guys to say, okay, look, you're doing this wrong and you can't come up behind them and tell them. So we've got that kind of e-learning module tied together. We've got full survey platforms in here. We have got obviously the ratings from here, but we've got full surveys. Again, multiple, multiple choice questions, full text answers. You can use it for net promoter scoring, whatever. There's a lot of information to be done there. It's got a full recruitment module and it's got the time and attendance. So again, as they're logging in here, they're going against their shift patterns. And I'll show you some of the reports. You've got both ends. Ops can actually look at their QA scores, their e-learning, not just their login times, their productive times there. So we've got all that information in here. Whole thing's built on RESTful APIs. It's all our own IP, well, apart from Facebook and WhatsApp, because obviously Zuckerberg wants his money. Um, but the whole thing's built on RESTful APIs, so we can do full integration if necessary. But I will mention just on the um, CRM integrations, we can do them, yeah? They can, at the end of the day, become very time consuming and very costly, depending on how far the customer wants to go. But with this, we also use webhook technology. So if there's anything in those databases that the customer wants to expose to an agent or be updated or changed and pushed back into the databases, they can do it with the webhook technology. We just expose it and put it through to the agent and send it back. They don't necessarily have to go a full CRM integration if it's a, they need the speed and the time, the convenience and the cost. You know? So we've got, we've got a couple of different options for, for different size solutions, basically. Okay. And at the other end of that, obviously we've got full analytics and reporting in here, which I'll show you. Um, uh, we do a lot of, everyone these days is on about data and obviously like managing your staff, and it is true. If you don't measure it, you can't improve it. So tying all of these functionalities together, we've built some very cool reports here, uh, which I'll, I'll show you a couple on as we go through. Now, that is a very high level overview of the platform. As you can probably see, it's not, just a dialer. It's a full end-to-end -end solution for a contact center. It's modular based, it's in a URL, it can be accessed remotely. What I'm gonna show you now, I'm actually sitting at home. So everything you see is what an agent would see working from home as well, or a manager working from home, or working within the land network. So, any questions? Hmm. Uh, any, Henry? Questions, any questions from the floor at this time? Anybody? Nothing for me. Okay. Yeah, just a few, a few things to add. I mean, obviously, you know, when we introduced this application to the US cars, um, you know, the human asset management was really an exciting piece for them. So again, uh, case in point, we had a quite a large telco out here. Um, you know, they were monitoring their agent activity, going through a turnstile, and then, you know, that was kind of registered as the guy's um, start time. And what they were finding was a guy goes for a smoke, he goes to the canteen, gets a cup of coffee, and he sits at his actual station and he starts his work. So effectively, you know, that's lost time. So when we, when we approached them with human asset management, they actually, they had a look at the application. We did a POC with them and we actually implemented the, 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 the product there. So it was for the back office as well as for, as well as for the agents. So, you know, when these agents came into work through the turnstile, um, you know, what they did was when you get to your desktop and you log into your portal on the HR system, that was when you actually clock in for work. And um, so much so that, you know, if you have a look at the, the pool of agents there, plus minus 400 agents, they were saving like 10, 15 minutes a day, in, you know, um, on, this, on this time that the agents were clocking in, going to the canteen or having a smoke. So... When, when, they, when they logged in via the human asset management platform, you know, that was their registered time to start. And um, we're now doing some integration via our RESTful API and as Elise said, the webhooks into their actual SAP payroll system so that, you know, this whole thing can be automated. 
again, as part of the human asset management side, we've got an asset management tool in there. So, you know, tracking assets that are assigned to certain individuals because headsets could cost a, a company a huge amount of money. One of our big debt collectors with 900 agents have, have implemented this. Um, they started to track the headsets. The agents now know that, you know, they're on the system and they've been tracked and it's saving them hordes of money uh, every, every, every month. So that was just a couple of case studies around that. So very important part of the puzzle, that. Good stuff. Um, okay, Lee, are you going to take us into the app? I am indeed, yes. Over to you. Out there and I'm be, <coughs> let me just kill that. Uh, let's use Chrome today. There we go. And Brian has joined us. Yeah, and Tracy's joined us too. Thanks and Tracy. For joining Trace. I know you're under huge pressure. Well, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. Thanks very much for having me and thanks for putting this on. Okay, now you should be able to see the login screens. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All good. Well, now, a couple of things as I log in here, I just want to show you a couple of things, okay? Now, this is that single sign on screen that we were talking about, that as you go through it, and it will start to obviously register and pick up. It's first thing in the morning, so I have done absolutely nothing so far today, but you'll see this changes as obviously it moves through. So I, from here, I can see my ratings. I, I know what I'm doing for the course of the day, and there's a lot of self-management tools in here as well, which you'll look at. Across here, I've got my HR platforms. If obviously I've got any courses that I need to do, any servers I need to do, I've got my time and attendance, my e-learning, everything from here from a single signer that we was talking about within the human asset management, my leave, my own KPI results, everything can be managed from here as well. So this is my, my company kind of view of where I am at the moment. I'm going to jump into the actual agent screens first off. Now, you'll notice here, it's dark themed. This is a conscious decision. The next release, we have allowed you to reskin it because obviously we've had a couple of requests. Um, but we went this way because a white screen with a bright green logo in the corner, or whatever, looks lovely when you're walking through a contact center with a client. But if you're stuck in front of it for eight hours a day, it is killing your eyes. So we have kind of like, we went this decision purposely, but you can change if you wanted to, yeah? This is that a lot of this is designed from the ground up, thinking about what is the best practice. A couple of bits on here. Let me just talk you through the screen and then we'll do some live demos. Down here, I've got my history of what I've done so far today. Yeah, got a couple of WhatsApps and a two-way SMS I was just playing with this morning. Got some stats of what, you'll see a lot more of this as I come through. Um, I'm gonna talk about our, I'm going to talk about this briefly when we come on a bit later. We have added this a lot. Some of these stuff we've added since COVID. Yeah, we've done a lot of tweaks and requests. We've added from an agent perspective this low data usage. Now, what it will do, it will actually turn off some of these graphs and stuff I'm going to show you. What it's on there for is the remote working agents. We actually measured, um, we used Glasswire, so it was an international standard. And we measured a voice agent talking for four and a half hours over a shift and they use just under 150 megabytes using that low data. So we have a very light footprint. I think we were 12 kilobytes on our voice. So again, if you have got people working from home, very useful to switch those on. Across here, obviously we've got our various different channels. So we touched on here. It is omni-channel. So yes, you can do your bulk SMS runs, they reply to the bulk SMS, but they can, if they wanted to, turn on, turn off, allow them to send manual SMSs. Some do, some don't. It depends how much they trust their agents. I'm, I'm ops and I don't trust agents in the slightest, but that's just a personal thing. Um, <laughs> again, if you wanted to, if you're working email chains, they can start a new email. Obviously it has to go through a campaign structure so they can't just sit there chatting to the mates. I mentioned about obviously the dialers, everything is included in here. There's no third party deployment. The soft phone's included in here. It's all under a URL. You can see some more stats starting to come up here. There's the agent can actually start to see what they're doing themselves. Tell your marketing, they can see my longest call is 30 seconds. I'm not getting that hook in. I can't get past that opening. Or my product is really low because my average, my average call is 20 minutes. They can start to manage themselves a bit more. These days, no, it's not like the old days. No one wants someone standing behind them now saying, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. Yeah? They need to be able to see it themselves. So they've got their own stats here as well. They can see obviously exactly what they've done, just a bit more in depth. They can see 
aggregated time. We all know if, um, if you've got agents working in multi different channels and you say, why, why is your online time low? Oh no, I, I was doing my emails. Or why, why are you ever working emails? I was in inbound queues. So this kind of gives them an overview and an aggregated so they can actually manage themselves. Yeah. That side as well. Now, almost every single content center is auto logging. Yeah. Again, you can allow them to switch campaigns if you wanted to. Oh no, it's entirely a personal matter from a setup point. And down here, down here, we've got our various different communications that are coming and going. Now, let's talk through a couple of here. Everything below this line is kind of a general. It's either an outbound call waiting to be worked, it's an email that's waiting to be worked. No one's actually done anything with it yet. Yeah, so it's waiting to be picked up. I've got an email, a web chat. Up here, I've got a two-way SMS. I've got WhatsApp. I've got some voice calls to make. These can, by the way, these can be set to work like a ACD. So the email will go to the, it won't go to a queue to be waited and, and chosen because agents will cherry pick. It will go to the longest idle email agent. Yeah, so that, it's just in my demo, I turn it off so I can actually show you things. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna do all of these, I'm just gonna touch on one or two of them. As the email comes up, you can see it's mine to work. So I'm just gonna pick this up. Couple of things with, with emails. Emails are great, yeah. You, you know who you're speaking to, you've got the message, you've got the names, you've got all the information you need without it's really having to ask any questions. But the system also knows, and this comes into its own a bit when we look at some other channels. Using the history, the system knows who this guy is anyway. I just use an email address and telephone number. It knows this email's come from Lee. And when we look at things like the SMSs and WhatsApps and things like that, again, it comes into its own side of things. You've got all your normal stuff you'd expect, reply, forwards. I'm not going to touch on things that everyone has. Extra little nice things we've got here, though. We all know about whether you call it a wrap-up, um, a transition, a completion code, a comp code, whatever, whatever your terminology you're using that particular client. It's the end of the transaction. It's the outcome. It's what you're going to report on. It's what you're measuring in your SLAs, your productivity on. That's there. But we've also got another one that's here. We call it tags. Uh, think of it like a post-it note, bookmark something along those lines. So at any point during any voice, email, WhatsApp, whatever, the agent can put a tag, post it, bookmark, whatever, against certain parts of the conversation. So say, for example, you've got a 20 minute voice conversation and it's gonna be wrapped up at the end as first call resolution. The agent partway through that can tag, started FICA rules, tag, finish FICA rules and wrap the whole call as first call resolution. So when you're QA and doing your reporting, et cetera, you don't necessarily listen to a whole 20 minute call. If you wanted to, you can just drill down to the parts that have been tagged as I need to look at these. Again, you can increase your productivity from your QA perspective. Uh, notes, free text notes are available and I'll show you some other aspects. We talked about the webhook technology, so you can add free text notes to any file and it can be exported back and pushed back into databases as well. Now I'm gonna to touch on here. This might take a bit of a while to come up because this is my demo system. And obviously my demo system has a hell of a lot of stuff in it. But if you think back to that original, that original idea behind the customer is the heart of the platform. It's everything is based around the interaction of that customer, whether it be by email, whether it be by WhatsApp, whether it be by um, voice calls, whatever. This, the agent can see every single thing this customer has done with your client. I'm just going to, as a mind's just run a bit, so it's got a lot in it, so I'm just going to put it right down so the journey's not putting up thousands of, thousands of items. There we go. Obviously, I use my demo system a lot, and other people do as well. But what we have coming up here is every single thing this customer's done, I can see for different journeys. This guy's had a couple of, uh, on August 27th, he spoke to us here on an SMS. Here he has a couple of WhatsApps with us. And you can actually see everything. And from here as well, I can obviously run a search across any channel. We all got those annoying customers where they send one email and copy five other email addresses. They can be set to alter the close user or the agent can go in and search across any channel, fill up anything else. But from here, the agent can also access every single thing that guy's done. I'm just popping me WhatsApp, think I'm. I'm guessing that's going to be James when I get there. Um, but they can also see and play all recordings back. If they're on a call to the customer, they can play it back. 
This has been, let me give an example of this in the collections industry, for example. This has come in very strong because rather than when the customer calls in and says, I didn't agree to pay you on the 15th, why are you debiting me, etc. Rather than the agent have to say, okay, look, let me, okay, I'll log it for you, sir. Then goes to the email, goes to queries team, queries pull out, obviously the recording, they're doing something else. The agent from here can find the recording, play it back to the, play it back to the customer, email it to them, send it to them on WhatsApp and say, look, sir, you did agree to pay us. First call resolution. And of course, that's the, across all channels. I can see uh, different, uh, what have I done? Well, I'm trying to think what I've done on this particular telephone number. I run a dual SIM. So. There you go, you can see some various different comments. You can see some sentiments here, which I'll look at at this moment. There's my emails that I've had with the guys. And everything is viewable from here. Let me wrap this one up and I'll show you something else. Okay. Uh, oh, quick thing I will mention here, by the way. Again, it ties the reporting and the SLAs and the stats. On a voice call, you've got your talk time, your update time, that's your average time, handling time, that's your SLA. Done, dusted. With any kind of chat channel, emails, uh, web chats, WhatsApps, SMSs, etc., you've got two measurements you need to work, look at. You've got the, how long does it take me as an agent to work this particular example? It might take me 30 seconds to work an email. But the backwards and forwards on that email to actually close off that query might be five hours because I'm waiting for a response back from the customer. So, and you might have a four hour SLA to close it. So you've got two measurements. You've got the actual account query kind of SLA and then you've got the agent SLA as well for working it. Okay, I don't know whether I, I'm just I'm not sure I've got, yeah, I've got you in here, James. Thank you so much. Um, now I'm just taking this WhatsApp here. Um, so I can show you a couple, all of these work the same, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different things. This is where this comes into its own, yeah? Because I'm not asking, who am I speaking to? I already know. I'm not asking for an ID number, security. Yes, you can ask your security questions, but you've got that kind of personal, personal touch. So let me just get rid of that. Let me send that to James, and I hope he's there and he's gonna respond. Uh, please don't swear, James, but you can give me a bad thing, so I wanna get, if I can, I can get a nasty emoji. Now, on this, you'll see this kind of sentiment analysis coming up here. I want to mention something on this. This works on polarity. Because if you give, give ops any kind of platform for more than 10 days, the agents will find a way to jimmy the system. That's life. It doesn't matter what this guy says here. As an agent, I could give excellent smiley faces. I'd love to have a copy of your bank statement, Jane, but well, let's not go there. Um, uh, whatever this guy says here, um, unless this customer comes up happy, the conversation is going to be marked as a neutral or a negative. So they can't kind of like fake the stats. Okay. I'm not sure. Again, obviously on the journey side. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to wrap this up because I want, oh, you have, I'm going to skin down here. Again, off of WhatsApp, I can see all the previous journeys that have come through as well, and I could go and look at them as well. Good with a service desk, for example. If the guy's coming through, look, I've emailed you, you haven't responded, so I'm now WhatsApping you. Yeah, I want an instant response, I'm on web chat. They can go and they can pull it up saying, okay, you logged the ticket, sir, we have it as closed, what happened? Is it back again? What's the route of password, etc.? They can pick it up from there without having to go to a CRM if necessary. As mentioned before, all your free text notes, your tags, everything's in here as well. And as expected, you can drop in templates, bank details, things you don't trust the, the agent to free text type. And you can transfer, escalate. When you transfer, by the way, it takes the whole chat with all the emojis, everything through to the escalation person and reports the fact it's now being moved from agent A to supervisor B. And obviously the reporting tracks through that as well. Just gonna wrap this up because I wanna show you something here. Now, when I wrap this up, James, when you get your rating through, I need you to give me a five because I need you to come back through again with a fresh one. This is going to tie into the, one well, talk about the AID stuff. That's me. Let me get rid of mine. Okay. Again, you can see it's chat. I know that I'm chatting with me. So let me just get rid of it now. Again, I'll wait for James to give me a five. If not, I'll give myself another five. Now on that AID, it, um, it's reading the fact that, I'm done, give myself a five. Okay. It's reading the fact that the sentiments of that previous conversation, sentiments of all previous conversations this customer's had with multiple agents and the ratings that customer has given them. So I'm just sending myself another WhatsApp here. Now, you'll see here, this has come directly through up here. 
it hasn't come to any kind of general queue. Okay? But you can see, oh, thank you, Jane. You can see it's completely fresh conversation. It's not a follow on from the last conversation. So it's not saying, okay, um, you were dealing with this customer, therefore I'm sending it to you. It's reading this, aid, this customer gets on really well with this agent. He always gives him fives, he always rates him well. And so it will try to route it through to this agent. You can turn it on, put it on tiers, whatever you want. Yeah? Different people across globally, across different queues. Very good for brand loyalty. If you've got anything over a 50, 60 seater call center, the chance you get through to the same agent is practically zero. If you can route it through to someone this guy's dealt with and likes, your brand, your customer's brand loyalty is going to be a lot higher. Good for tele sales, following up, customer retention maybe. Debt collection, obviously, because they have a habit, habit of paying Peter, they're not paying the other two for the next summer, then they pay, pay Peter for the third time. If they feel the loyalty towards the company, it'll come through. I'm just gonna quickly wrap that one up. That's, that, that's why I say the AID is easier to show than anything else. These work the same. Two-way SMS works exactly the same. You know, I'm not gonna go through, you can see, they, they all look and work the same. That's a web chat. Yeah. That, is, by the way, is, um, if you have any, that bot technology we were talking about at the start, if you have any kind of automated greeting or they go through a bot and then break out to the agent, obviously that transaction or that conversation they've had with the bot is pushed through to the agent as well, so they're not repeating themselves. It's a bugbearer of all of us. We all hate it. You put all your details in, you get through to the agent and say, what's your ID number? I just entered it. So everything is pushed through here to the agent. They can see the whole conversation via the bot as well and pick up the rest of the flow. Let me wrap that one up briefly. Look over time, so I'm okay. Um, from obviously the dialer perspective, I'm just going to touch on one dialer because I want to get onto the back end reports. Um, this is also the outbound dialer. Uh, I've, I've said it as a preview because I don't want to go into a predictive dialer. So if we're going to a predictive dialer, it's going to start calling. Yeah? Um, oh. They all look the same, to be honest. What we've done here is this is obviously the database, this is the CRM, the warehouse, whatever's been loaded or has been pushed to the system. You can, as I mentioned, if you have clients who want to be, don't want to have an integration, as long as they've got a file, they can upload it, we can plug into it, they can present all this to the agent. You can, notice if they turn this on, turn it off. Um, you can obviously have them change it if you wanted to, if you're doing tele-sales, the chance of a data set, we'll probably 50% of the people you call are not actually the people you want, but you're going to try and sell anyway. So they can up change it if they wanted to, or you can just turn it off entirely up to your customer. But again, it's an all of these options and functionalities are turn on, turn off, depending on what your customer wants. You can build scripts into here. Just dialing off, you can see here's just my references. So you can build a whole scripting process if you wanted to. It can be used like here for a script. I've got other clients that I know that just use it with bullet points, yeah? Don't forget your NATO points. Don't forget this. And they just put boom, boom, boom in here instead. But again, it's really how your customer wants to use it. As you would expect, obviously you've got your callbacks, your scheduling, everything you would expect to it. Now I'm gonna quickly make one because I wanna show you something here. I'm gonna call myself and I've got to hang up so I don't get an echo, so hang on. Now, as I'm doing this, let me just I'll quickly answer that. There we go, echo, 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 echo. Yeah. there we go. Wrap that up. Another option they might like is here. You've got those free text notes. This is using that webhook technology. I'm going here to create a task for an email. So after any particular campaign or per call or whatever, it might be, I don't want to create a task, but I do want to create a task. And that is going to generate, an, in this case, an email going to the predefined email address to carry that task out. So if you're a service desk, for example, and it's an escalation, it might go to an escalation's email account. And the calls come in, escalation off. So you can do that as well. Options you have. So. Now that's kind of giving you a, a very quick overview of the agent side of things. Before I jump in and look at the back end, is there anything specific you want to talk about on the agent side? <clears throat> Any questions from the floor? Not specifically from our side. It's good so far. Thank you. Excellent. Cool. Um, okay. It's just watching time a little bit. Uh, yeah. we'll just no, no, that's, that's why I'm, I'm skimming through some of this stuff. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to look at my supervisor screen. So. I'm going to touch on briefly on a couple of the reports and stuff we've done here. You can see, obviously, a supervisor screen. Um, I'm not going to go through a whole click here, click here, this is the config. I'm just going to touch on a couple of bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. um, from our, obviously, warbles and reports, 
Uh, obviously, we have all our dashboards, as you would expect. Yeah. And this is all the config. It's all GUI based. There's no coding. Reports all work the same. So we'll touch on one, one or two reports and just move on. Yeah. We've done these differently. When you've got your team leaders come to the end of a shift, they're all pulling out their days, their queues, their filters, exporting it down to Excel, going back, running the next report, downloading to Excel, and building up the statement and the stats they have to send out to the management team. That can tie up data if you're working from home or clog up your LAN networks if you're working in the office. So what we've done here is when you run the report, it actually builds a cube. Yeah? And then you drill down on that cube. So your actual data usage and speed is very fast. You can see here, for example, there is my report. But if I want to drill down a bit further, I'm not resubmitting anything. I'm drilling down on the cube. And again, like from the agent perspective and the customer journey, you can report in the other side. So I can see everything. I run a report. I can also see, pull the recording from here. I can see the email. I can see the chat. I'm not going to a third party app. I've identified an issue, a problem. Let me go and find what it is. Everything is available from here. That's again, that's across all platforms, your voice recording, your WhatsApps, everything is there. Now, I'm gonna jump into a live system for a moment. Um, I do have permission to go into this system. I'm not randomly going into people and clients, so you, know, you can trust me on this one. Uh, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna jump into, we just want to touch on a couple of the wall boards. That's all. I want to so you, again, different things we've done here. You've got your classic wall board. We call it classic for a reason. It's got your agents, your SLAs, your queues, your talk time drop. It's you know, your classic wall board that you would expect. Okay. See, so these are a hell of a lot of queues. Wow. But also under here, we've got your inbound calls, waiting, etc. I want to show you this one because again, this is slightly different. These. Obviously, it could be filtered. It saves whatever I choose here. It would save it as my particular view. So there we go. If I look back in, I'm not seeing everyone. I'm only seeing my agents. These are all remote agents, okay? From here, I can chat to the agent. The agent can raise a hand and chat to the team leader because they're remote and they can't shout. But we've done something else here as well. See that connection lost there? So all these guys are talking all nicely. This, we're measuring the speed of this remote agent on our platform. So this particular client says, if the connection is too slow, it's going to be a bad voice connection. Don't send any calls to them. Look for the next agent because they're worried about the customer experience. They're worried about getting through to them and losing that customer. And they won't call in again. Okay. Or they won't call out again. Another customer doesn't care a jot about the customer experience. All they care about is their SLA and they just turn it, they say, send, send it to everyone. But we're measuring these as well. Use very, very powerful for remote agents. So you're improving not just your, um, the customer experience, but your actual effectiveness. The guy's not having to phone you five times because he can't hear you. So we've built these into the wall boards as well. And just touching briefly on the reports, on something else on these reports, we looked at the communication side. But remember we've got that single sign-on coming through the human asset side? Layering those two together, becomes really, really powerful. This is all the HR platform. You can view the uh, HR uh, reports and stats through the communication side, or you can view the communication stuff for the HR side. You know, it's this one platform. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna look at time and attendance for a quick thing. Uh, let's have a look here. This is actually a live system, so I'm not sure how long it'll take. I'm not, I don't know, it's month end. This is actually a collections company. So I don't know how many agents they got logged in working, et cetera. But, what we've done is, because you can look at things like their address, their age, their gender, you know, any, their, their previous experience, anything that's in your HR platform and overlay it with your communication stuff, your, your logins, your productivity, your SLAs, et cetera. You can then start to drill down within here without another BI tool saying, okay, that particular campaign, that queue, it's got a good SLA, but it's, oh, it's got a bad SLA but it's all coming from this particular age group or it's coming from this particular area. Um, and you can kind of like start to identify different channels. And what I've requested, I'm just while I'm waiting for this to come up, see that connection lost that was there? Because we're measuring the connection speed as well. Here we go. If you overlay that connection speed onto a Google map or like drop speeds, 
for your client, if they're working remotely, can identify hotspots of bad connections. It could be a case of, look, all, all my agents in Cape Town, they've all got bad connections. Log them all out and log in extra agents in Durban. And you can see that remote connectivity on hotspot. That's not actually in it. That's something I've, I've, I've requested actually to be built. But when you start to think about adding the two together, I mean, these guys, as the head count, interesting. Um, so this is the other side. I can see here, for example, this is taking my login times off my communications platforms. I can see I've got 26.4% of the staff are male, but 27% logged in late. So my male staff are more likely to log into the systems later and, and go on longer breaks than my female staff. And you can start to drill down a bit more across both platforms using the analytics. So there's a lot you can do with this. It's a different thing, yeah. Now, that gives you a, a very high level overview of the system. There's a lot here. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I'm just gonna touch on a few of the differentiators. So that ties me, so I'm open up for any questions, any queries, anything in particular you wanna see or go a bit more in depth on, it's entirely up to you. Um, any other specific questions? Because I'd, I'd really like you to finish off maybe Henry on the costing model, because uh, that's become yeah. far more, not more important, but it's, its importance is now coming to the fore. Um, is how, yeah. how, how this is costed and, and sure. the competitive advantage. So is there, if there's no more questions and we can get, we can, we can dive into that, Rod. Um, just left in the round, Robin, anybody, Hilaria, Debbie, Henriette, Brian, Tracy. Yeah, Rod, Rod I've just got a question. Um, I'm just curious. I just want to check with regards to user training. So looking at your agents and supervisors, what is your current approach with that? And how many days do you see on average does it take to, to go through that user training, especially considering work from home? Um, can you just give a bit more info on that? Nice one. Yeah, from the, um, from the training point of view, obviously we've got, we've got various different channels. We've got, a whole, we've got obviously the training manuals, which are accessible from the systems. There's training videos that are accessible from the system, obviously part of the e-learning stuff. And we can also we do remote sessions. Uh, I'll actually give you a real life example in it, as it happens. Um, it was for one of the big power utilities. They had to roll out their remote agents, okay? Uh, and the existing big American platform couldn't do it. They gave us a week to get 80 agents for one of the, a power utility who will remain nameless because I'm hoping you all, no one's in load shedding at the moment. Um, we had to roll out their agents. We trained up from the agent perspective, 80 agents in one day. It takes on average half a day to run through the agent training and then obviously a bit of practice and yeah, role plays, etc. But it's, it looks complicated, but it's very intuitive. You saw from the, the chat side, everything's designed. Once you've worked one, they all look the same. They all work the same. You can kind of like, oh, I'm, oh, yeah, I can do this. So it took about half a day for an agent, to be honest. From a supervisor side of things, the actual co system configuration. So you're configuring your inbound queues, your outbound queues, your, your wrap-ups, your breaks, that side of things. My personal experience, I've probably, I've taken roughly, I allow two days for that. Because I think, depends how much of the platform they're trying to roll out in one go. It's, we, all, we all know this from, from previous experience. It's probably not best to say, okay, there's eight different channels you can use. Let's train you in all of them. We try and take it in, in, in nuggets, basically. But we take roughly from a start to a finish, from a purchase order being received, spinning up the instance, doing the training, getting them alive is about eight working days. Oh, that's impressive. Henriette, does that address your question? Yeah. Brilliant, it does. Thanks a lot, Lee. Okay. Uh, Just to add to that, Henriette, is um, obviously, you know, um, with, with the home office environment that we've, we've just gone through, and, and well, obviously these guys are still currently using the platform in a home office environment, um, we've actually um, gone through a series of creating mini videos. So, you know, how to log on, how to take a call, how to do this. So we, we also push that through to the end users. Thanks, Henry. That makes a lot of sense. I'm yep. sure it works. Thanks. And now for the exciting stuff, which is show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the the the, the slide that uh, Lee put up there, uh, we've taken a conscientious decision, is to say we you know we don't want to unpack the solution and sell it in kind of um, 
components as such. So, you know, whatever you've seen on that slide is is covered under one license, and um, you know, uh, you know, going to market is is we we pegged it down at 800 rands a license. Obviously, if you want this to run into AWS or Azure, there's obviously a hosting fee. That hosting fee is anything from 90 rand to 100 rand per agent, and then part of that license fee includes the actual business day support. Um, if you want 24 seven, there's 6% 6, 6 of the license cost um, that we charge for 24 seven support. And that's really it. Um, also two other components that, that um, we, we, you know, we weren't going to develop is number one, speech analytics. So we partnered up with Corby, Corby R, uh, busy integrating that into the platform. So that'll be an offering we'll take to the marketplace and also workforce management. And uh, obviously those two components, um, you know, would have a separate price. So I think we try to keep it simple. Um, it's been well received internationally and, and also locally, by the way. And uh, again, rand based pricing. So um, yeah, so we, we do have our own private cloud or otherwise we can put the application into Azure. Um, Henry, the, just you can just stress the <coughs> no long-term contracts aspect. Correct. Obviously, it's in our interest to get a long-term contract, Rod. Uh, we'd like to sell, sign up at 12 months or 24 or 36. <laughs> but, um, yeah, exactly. So we're on a month-to-month -month, um, and you pay for the licenses up front and any sort of billing in terms of utilization is um, consolidated to the end of the month and we'll send you a bill for the previous on the previous month for you know the usage in terms of um, communication, interaction, SMSs, etc. Then uh, Henry, let's so jump in there. We busy build just for uh, interest sake on the BPO side, where the where clients or the BPO industry and, and, and so their seat requirements can jump up and down on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on contracts that they're receiving or losing, or just short term contracts they're working on. You're busy putting together SaaS model, pro, um, SaaS model pricing for them as well. So it becomes basically on demand. So there's a, a minimum requirement of X amount of agents. We're looking about 50 to start. And then after that, you can grow, you can roll up to 5,000 agents um, and roll in two months and then roll back down to that. So we're just going to build per usage for that month. So we're also working on a specific model for the BPO sector as well. Excellent. Um, Debbie, any questions from your side? Because I know you've got a specific application. Uh, yeah, no, I've got no questions. I'm just looking at the costing. Um, what is your cost per SMS? Um, Lee, you James. Special rates. So the SMS depends on their volumes, but we, we normally, in, in most scenarios, we, we, we've bettered the, uh, the, the current existing pricing. Mm -hmm. Reason being, because our major business is not SMS. So, you, and so what you need to understand is that we've got a, we, we, a lot of people ask, can we plug into the existing SMS providers? The, the issue is that not all SMS providers can supply the functionality that we can have for the two-way SMS. Mm -hmm. So we've part global provider. So we get very good rating in South Africa. If you look at one of, okay. we've got a large Petro, we're working currently with all the B2B and we're moving the B2C in 25 countries. So you've got a nice strong relationship with a, a proper international SMS provider. We looked at a lot of local, we initially okay local providers, but the problem is they were using gray routes and discounted routes and low track, and we never got mm. proper notifications. So we spent a lot of time, we spent about three years integrating and finding a best provider. So we use InfoBib, we're not going to hide it. Um, is that one of the mm -hmm. large platforms? And we okay. made a partner for them in South Africa. So depending on what the requirements are, we can, most of the time we can beat existing SMS. Okay, that again. sounds good. And then APIs. Do you have standard off-the-shelf APIs? We've got, I think we've got excess of about 300 APIs. Okay. Uh, are you shelf. thinking of, uh, Debbie, are you thinking of your, your integrations back into your, no. your Zen? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple no. of different systems that we need to have a look at. Then the standard APIs, I, I don't know that they would work, so uh, there might have to be some development done. We've but done that's, that's, that's not issues yeah. yeah we, I mean that that could be a separate cost anyway. Yeah, you know, one of the big things that's been we've been successful is because not every client runs the same. And what happened, what we found is that 
And you, I'm saying you guys can um, um, I think agree to this as well, is that a, a lot of the platforms out there, they've got their standard stuff and you have to work around what they've got. We very much mm. listen to our partners and people like yourselves who are experts in the industry because we don't have all the answers. And we've had a lot of suggestions and other things that come where they ask for this, thing, this type of feature would be great or if this integration can be done and it's a critical part of the client's requirement and we can look at a longer term contract, we would look at, mm -hmm. at discounting those type of integrations because it's beneficial for us and yourself. So okay. we look at every client case by case basis. Um, and yeah, it's, it's because we own all the source code, just thing from, the, just from, from a bit of information is that we, took to the, we built it on asterisks, but we took the core stack right down to basis and rebuilt it from ground upwards. We have not used any third party applications anywhere in applications. So we haven't taken like um, uh, free PABX and done that type of stuff and integrated. We've written the core from ground upwards. So okay. we control a lot more than most people can do because we own the stack. We just decided to partner with Core BI because what they've done has been phenomenal. We really like what they're doing. So we're busy integrating. We've just piloted now. We've just done a, a, a client 550 agents and it's really run nicely. We're getting some very nice insight out of it. And, um, and then the workforce manager, we found a very good uh, cloud-based workforce management package, which we'll be releasing to the market and at South African based pricing. We fought very hard to get a very good workforce management package that can be um, market and sold in South Africa that's not going to break people's banks because we want to keep stuff as, as cost effective in South Africa. Absolutely. And that was going to be my next question. So when are you launching a WFM? Uh, we've, been just in, we've just signed that. Um, we've just signed the agreement. Yeah. Um, just finishing the integration. The integration will be finished by the end of the month and the press release will be in the next month or so. So it's, it's, it's a good WFM. It really is nice. We went and looked at a lot of products. It's out of the US. And we went and looked at a lot of products. And firstly, they, they, everybody wanted to bully you. This is the pricing. We're not interested in negotiating pro pricing for different market sectors. But we went and, went and found someone that was willing to talk to us and, and price with what we want and gave us all the features and functionality that we needed. Um, I can tell you guys, it's, community, it's a product called Community FM, WFM. I can, I can get Rod to send out the links and the information to you guys. We've signed the agreement already, so I'm not talking to you. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, and it's a really nice product. And if you look at the, entry, the price that's coming in, it'll be, it's, we'll undercut any workforce management in South Africa. Sounds so, good. And we can plug into other, uh, other uh, products if required. Uh, and you'll kick my butt for okay, And then just, you said you are, no, somebody mentioned they're working in Africa. Uh, will this product be launched into Africa as well? We so do. yes, I mean, no, we, we obviously, um, sorry, James. I got it in. No, we'll um, we'll take it through through to Africa through a partner matrix. So we'll okay. we'll assign partners who are active in the in those regions. Okay. Great. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Just to go back to your, your first question, Debbie, in terms of the actual integration. So you know, again, I think that's one of the silver bullets. I mean, the, the local development team sits in Randburg, and uh, I think that's a differentiator for us. Oh, because, that helps. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, we've had a couple of. Um, integration requests where we've had to delve into kind of legacy email systems and, and get that email mm -hmm. management program working. So two, three days, you know, we, we kind of do that, that, okay. that integration. Yeah. So as long as the I'm API is kind of available, we'll, we'll, we'll integrate. Yeah, Henry, I'm thinking of my one client, it's legacy systems, but they're also looking at Microsoft CRM, which is the easy part, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but they've got other things that sit in the background that are not so... I don't even know how they're supporting it anymore with the code. <laughs> right, well, fine. yeah, we've done some of those. Okay, good. No, that's fine. As long as you're up to the challenge. Yep. Okay. Um, with an eye to the time, and I know everybody's under severe pressure being Friday. Uh, just round robin, get <laughs> okay. Um, Hilaria, anything? You've been a bit quiet there. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to ask around like the pricing. So you've bundled the whole unit in, in as one bundled price. So if a customer just wants to use part of it, they've got to pay that 800 Rand. I mean, that's, that's the deal. Well, that's the deal. But if it's strategic and, um, you know, uh, you know it's, it's a large volume customer, obviously, you know, we're open to a discussion and, um, you know, it's not cast in stone. So, you know, again, 
we, we want to capture the market, but also mm. maintain, maintain margin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I just, you know, it's just I'm looking for like sources of value. Like say, if the customer is using, has to pay for the whole thing, but I'm using part of it now, but it will roll up in the future. You know, we've got, you know, like they might feel that they're paying for something they're not using. But I, I obviously get it from your side. And then in terms of counting the number of licenses, is it like, um, like, uh, is it per agent or per sort of simultaneous ma- uh, so, um, is it, concurrent, um, uh, concurrent basis or how does that work? Concurrent. Yes, it's concurrent basis. Okay. Um, and then in Again, terms of the con- sorry, sorry in, in terms of the contract you're, you're, term, is, is that is that like the longer the contract term, the the price will come down a bit, I presume. Well, again, it's, it's part of the negotiations. So, yeah. you know, obviously, okay. we want to stick to the price of the market. We believe it's attractive for what they're getting. And to answer sure. your first question in terms of, you know, do they use all the functionality? All the, all the customers that we have, you know, we've either started with an email or started with an HR or started with just purely outbound. But I think once the, um, the agents and also the organization sees the values of, you know, the consolidated mm-hmm. application, it's amazing how they actually adapt to that and, and take it on. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause I just, and then, yeah. So in terms of customer, customer support, you've got obviously various tiers at, at various pricing points. Um, As I said, yes, so the business day is all included in the license. We follow the yeah. sound. We have Mauritius, we have the U S we have local, and then in terms of reference sites or, you know, yes. if I got a, did you have, you know, like specific uh, number of reference Unfortunately, sites? Not, not, all com- not all company policy allows case studies, but um, we have a large number of customers. So, um, and most of them are referenceable. So we'll put you in touch okay. with, with the people so you can have a one-on-one discussion with them. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think that's it from my side. Thanks, thanks a lot for everybody. I think it's uh, just quite, uh, I, I like the fact that, you know, like if I, if I could sort of, um, you know, like package all the sort of like when you, so you spoke about, like you're trying to like look for loopholes in the current, in the current environments and, we, and you did something different. Um, and then you came up with like a set of disruptive features. You know, if, I don't know if you've got like a document or all that sort of just summarizes, encapsulates that because I think that's, that's quite powerful. Um, from from what I got out of this session today, of course, yeah, we we turn those as silver bullets, and um, obviously we want to make those available so that you know um, when when you're talking to your competitor, these are the ones you highlight, and yeah, um, that's that's where we win. Yeah, I agree. We are we can make that available. Okay. Okay, um, Henriette, anything from your side? Uh, Rob, no, actually, no, I'm good, thanks. I've asked the questions. I, I, yeah, it's a good system. I really like the, the dashboards, the reporting. I like the fact that it measures lost connection because I know that's a big issue, um, especially with the work from home agents. That's brilliant. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I really like the, the integration with the um, human resources, people management side. I think that's, that's something that's lacking in a lot of other systems out there. So, no, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. And very exciting when we get the core BPs integrated as well. To access to another level. Um, of Brian, are you still with us there? Any questions? No, you're still on mute. Okay, I know you were busy doing some other stuff. So I think, uh, folks, uh, thanks to everybody for joining. Thanks to uh, James and uh, Henry and Lee for all your inputs, and uh, Debbie, Hilario, Brian, Henriette, and Tracy. Thanks for spending time with us. I have recorded this session and uh, I'll put a link on it into Dropbox and uh, pass it around through the consultants network. So, thanks everybody. Have yeah, a- and, th- and thanks, thanks everybody. Yeah, I appreciate your time. So, you know, anything you need from our perspective, reach out, um, gladly to support you in any endeavor in terms of an opportunity you may have. Um, yeah, we will wear your hat for that, for that process. So glad to engage. Great. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Bye, everybody. Be safe. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.